Hello YouTube, today I'm taking a look at FS Economy, or Flight Sim Economy. This is an application that in some ways is very similar to what FS Passengers does, as well as Air Hauler, or FS Captain, a couple other payware add-ins. However, this one is 100% free. Not only that, unlike the other ones I mentioned, this one will also work with X-Plane. So if you're an X-Plane uh, player, fly X-Plane, I have both it and FSX Steam Edition. It does work with both the boxed version, the older versions of FSX, as well as the new Steam Edition, or I should say newer Steam Edition. So what you do is you go to fseconomy.net, you register for an account on their forums, and then request a Game World account. A couple of days later, they'll get back to you and give you login information. Then you go and you download either the FSU IPC client or the SimConnect client. The one that I have downloaded here happens to be the FSU IPC. I have it installed because it's a requirement for FSXWX, the weather engine that I'm using. And then you can join them on their TeamSpeak. Likewise, you have to request access to their TeamSpeak and they will give you a one-time code uh, that essentially only allows you to log into the TeamSpeak with your client. If you ever change your client or anything like that, you got to request a new access code. Uh, so. One of the things about FS Economy is it's been around for about 10 years now. It has thousands of pilots who are members and thousands of missions that are being flown each month. Now in FS Passengers, you pretty much select what other aircraft you have in your library. If you have enough money and you start with seed capital, uh, ranging from a half million all the way up to 500 million uh, virtual dollars in FS, or in FS Passengers, you purchase the aircraft you're going to fly from point A to point B. Although you can turn off economic mode and then it's just simulating whatever aircraft that you want to fly and that's in your library that particular day. Now when it comes to FS Economy, the missions are planned out. You don't get to choose your destination and your amount of time flown. Uh, additionally, the aircraft that are available to rent uh, are also a little bit more limited. And let's just kind of take a look at that. Let's say today uh, I want to take off from... We're just going to go ahead and use Lambert International Airport, KSTL. And I'll tell you a little bit about that aircraft. Uh, on an average, there's 45 missions flown to this airport in a month. Currently, there's four. However, today is June 1st, so that month just rolled over. You can see the number of missions flown here with a graph over time. And what you're seeing here, you can tell when... Uh, FSX Steam Edition was released because, hey, there's a sudden uptick in traffic, uh, which I imagine are newer people who have downloaded FSX and are looking for, I don't want to necessarily say a reason for flying, but a to give them a little bit more purpose. And that's why a lot of people also like FS Passengers. That's a reason why I like FS Passengers. Not only that, but FS Passengers has a career mode. This sort of kind of does. But there's a lot of detailed information. Today, these are the list of passengers and flights that we can go to. If you hover over it, it will tell you this is to you, Dixon, Illinois. Uh, where's Cam? Pontiac, Illinois, Municipal. Taylorville, Illinois. And you have all of these different flights with different number of passengers, corporate charters, group assignments would be virtual airlines within the game that players have created. So here's group charter, express envelope to West Plains, building materials, supplies to Creve Corps. Uh, I'm assuming that's probably for whatever group owns the FBO at Creve Corps. 1HO is Creve Corps Airport. It's also in St. Louis area. And it will tell you your general direction of travel, south -e or southwest, west, 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 northwest. So you can kind of kind of figure out, oh, well, maybe I want to fly. Well, what aircraft are available to fly here? There's an a Airbus 3, A320, Cessna. If it has a star next to it, it means it's privately owned by another player in the game universe. You can click on the aircraft there. It'll tell you the history, who owns the aircraft. There's five of them for sale if you wanted to. Uh, this airport is based out of Creve Corps and it's currently here. It's fuel, it's current fuel load, consumption, fuel type, payload capacities at different fuel levels, 
equipment, VFR, IFR, autopilot, GPS. Time since it's one hour, 100 hour service time. I'm guessing that means a limit of 1500 hours in the air fly, uh, airframe. But, ooh, and there was just a maintenance done on this aircraft at the beginning of this year. So this was last flown the 11th of January. Oh, of last year, not even of this year. So it's been sitting here for a while. Let's see what kind of maintenance handled. Piedmont Aviation Services is an in-game FBO. So that'll tell you the history, and you can additionally select all we're going to show, and then wait for it to come up. This is a history of all of its flights and what it looks like. So we're going to go back to airports here, and I don't think there's actually any aircraft here that I can actually fly. Um, I would have to go, like a Martin 404, I would have to go find one. Uh, Piaggio P149D, I'd have to go find one, either freeware or payware, download it. You have to have the aircraft in your library in addition to, you know, given them what's available. Now, I do know for a fact that there, there are a, there is a P149D that is available at Flyaway Simulations for free. And it didn't look that bad. So you'd have, I'd have to go to Flyaway Simulations, download that aircraft. Let's, the other thing you can do is go down here, and I need to select rentable, and select aircraft that maybe you do have. Now everybody will have a Cessna 172, so I'm just going to go ahead and open up web search here and go to, uh, Mississippi, hmm, really? There's no 172s in Missouri. I'll be darned. All right. Oh, here's the one that I flew earlier. So there's two passengers that need to go to St. Louis. They're paying that much. Here's a Cessna 162. Its home is actually STL, so we'll get money for taking it there. This is a privately owned aircraft, and in fact, we'll see that I have refueled it last time, and I took it for a flight. 45 minutes, distance 41 nautical miles. Total engine time is 23 hours since its last service overhaul. Uh, there was maintenance here. So I flew that a couple of days ago. So this aircraft is owned by CM Flyer SRC, who flew it uh, before me a couple of days before. So it looks like Kerbo did this flight back in February a couple times. So we're going to go ahead and we'll, we'll book this one as an example. So I'm going to go ahead and checkbox these two. Uh, Pittsburgh, no, that's going to go northwest. We need to go southwest. And then I can either book it to my airline or to my flight, which would be personal. So I'm going to go ahead and book it to my personal. And we'll go up to my flight. These are assignments that you've selected. This is how many days that it expires in. And we'll go down to hours. So that's how long you have to complete it before that mission will go off the board. So that's the value of both of these assignments. I have not selected an aircraft yet, so I need to go back to the airport screen. And I'm going to go ahead and rent this aircraft dry. So that guy expires in 12 minutes. That's now locked, so I will go to my flight. And 137 kilograms remain at the available fuel load. What's our current gas tank? 24 gallons, that's 44%. Uh, somewhere it should tell me what my fuel flow for this aircraft would be. 10 gallons per hour. Uh, the, we know the flight's going to be 45 minutes to an hour. Cruise speed of 100 knots. So 10 gallons. We still got over twice as much fuel as we need on board to complete this flight. 
So we don't need to refuel it. That's not a problem. Now this is the log. These are all of the flights that I've done. And you can see here some popular ones, screen, uh, Springfield, Missouri to Jefferson City, Missouri. And we'll probably see some of these flights in the near future. But these are based on aircraft that I actually have. I have the Coronado uh, 1900D. I've actually also downloaded a 1900C to use it for some missions. Here's all the revenue that I've made on these various flights. Again, the couple that I made was Cessna 172s out of St. Louis to, I think this is Pickneyville. And then the nice thing is you can see this is my first original flight. Now you start with zero dollars, but it adds and subtracts your bank balance at the end of the flight. So income here, I made 1700 total. It cost me $105 uh, to rent the aircraft or cost per unit. So it was $80 to rent the aircraft for 45 minutes. $28 in fuel, no landing fees, no additional crew, ground crew fee to Piedmont Aviation Services and St. Louis, no booking fee, additional cost was the total of $199. And since I was taking it away from St. Louis, I get hit with a negative distance bonus. But bringing that aircraft back to St. Louis, I'll get credited that amount. So I earned a total of $1,390. Uh, dollars and 41 cents for that flight and that's kind of how it figures it out uh, if you want to see my most profitable flight uh, this is from Cape Girardeau to Springfield for Branson Springfield Regional cost me a little over 800 to rent the aircraft for an hour fuel fee additional crew that was my co-pilot ground crew fee for handling the bags, a booking fee. I'm not, I think that's because some of the airline passengers was from a uh, particular group in game. So we could take a look at, you know, this Central Litchfield. That's the FBO for this airport. I uh, can't construct any more FBOs. And you do this by flying uh, certain amounts of supplies to a particular airport that doesn't already have an FBO or has a lot available and then you build it up and then you've got to maintain service to that meaning you've got to haul in fuel and things like that now whenever I make a fuel purchase here let's say I bought a hundred gallons of fuel here at Central from Central Litchfield if I did that, uh, that person would receive the three ninety five per gallon. Uh, so they would receive, if I bought 100 gallons, they would receive, uh, what, 395 uh, in-game currency dollars from my bank account. Now, making money is hauling goods and passengers from point A to point B. You can also purchase, once you get an aircraft that can haul enough goods, you can purchase building materials or supplies and other things and then haul it to another airport and sell it for a profit so that's another thing you can do uh, the other thing you can do is uh, you can earn interest on your bank balance it's 5% APR which is actually in this day and age in banking pretty good uh, but it's paid out daily meaning it will be 5% of your balance divided by 365 and that's how much interest you get during that period so in other words, I've earned $4.50 in interest to my bank account. Um, and this is very important. After you fly a mission, you need to basically put that money back into your bank account at the end of the day, else you're not going to get interest if it's sitting in your petty cash box. Uh, much like your bank's not going to give you interest on basically money in your wallet, uh, it has to be in the bank in order to draw that interest. And this is the airline I've created, Fickert Airways, or I should say Group. And there's a lot of uh, you know, a lot of different groups out there. And then the groups can work together to fly more uh, missions. They're from all around the world. Uh, basically, whenever you fly as part of another airline, it'll be one of those things where maybe you have to give them a percentage of, you either get a percentage of the haulage or you give them a percentage uh, that goes into the group account, and then they can establish FBOs or flight business operations, essentially, uh, such as 
uh, providing fuel, repair and maintenance services. Uh, what's the other one? Passenger terminal. And you have to build those up, and then you have to supply the goods in order to keep them going. So they kind of generate missions. However, FS Economy has been around for, well, 10 years. So a lot of airports, the most major airports, and even a lot of the smaller regional airports already have FBOs operating out of there. You know, this is an example of Litchfield. I'll go down here and look at KSGF. This is Springfield, Missouri. And you'll see that Ozark Air has an FBO there. Uh, if I go to another one of my popular destinations here, Jefferson City, you'll see that uh, it too is Ozark Air, KSTL, again was Piedmont Aviation Services, uh, owned by, I'm assuming that player, so this is the player that owned or owns the Cessna that will be flying in today's mission. Yep, see there's passengers to take up to at Litchfield. For Cessnas, that's usually not a bad route to take. A lot of Metropolis, Cairo. I know it says Cairo, but the proper local pronunciation is Cairo, Illinois. Uh, Sykeston. I'm familiar with, well, all of these locations, actually. Poplar Bluff, Farmington. In fact, if you had a large enough plane, you could take six down to Farmington and then the rest on to Poplar Bluff. Building materials to take to Creve Core, but there's no money involved in that. Piedmont Aviation, the company, they have a passenger here, so they have a passenger terminal to take to... Great Bend Municipal and Great Bend, Kansas. If we see here, that's owned by Piedmont, Piedmont Aviation Services. And then they have a lot of passengers from Piedmont. 28 passengers, hospital supplies. And then you can see how much each one of those will run you. Looks like I've looked at this airport. Maybe Wrench Midland, Texas. Hmm. 482, 1000, Cheyenne, 400. Cessna Citation 2. Hmm. B-35. This is probably my next payware aircraft purchase. I love Beechcraft Bonanzas as well as Pipers. I just I've always liked the look of both of those most of the aircraft models. Just their generic general look. I like the low profile model wing. I, I just I prefer that to Cessna. But so and then goods if you want to buy and uh, transfer Assignment areas. These are assignments for different groups. So if you had more pilots flying in this group, you could say, hey, we need to move 500 pounds or 500 kilograms of supplies from this airport to that airport in order to help build our FBO or supply one of our FBOs or something like that. That's where you would generate those missions for an assignment. It's not something that I... It's one of those things, if you're looking to interact with other people and kind of get a feel for SF economy first, I wouldn't go creating your own virtual airline unless you've already got a couple of three friends that are going to fly with you. It's just one other layer of additional management and things to try to figure out as you get going. Uh, additionally, I don't know if it pays out interest on group balances or your group bank account balances. That's something I haven't figured out in the first couple of days. Uh, if it does, I don't think it tells me where I do anywhere. So, add selected to my flight. So there's not any kind of information here on, on group assignments here because, well, my group doesn't own anything. Uh, in fact, I think it would be better off that if you join a larger existing group that are just trying to do stuff, they can probably help you get more facilitated and interested in, in learning how to do everything before trying to create your own virtual airline, unless you have a couple of three friends who also like to flight sim and you all want to work together. Now, you don't have to play together in multiplayer online. Uh, I guess you could, uh, but it is certainly not a requirement. Now, there are a couple of tricks to getting started here. So, if you notice on my flight here, I have an aircraft rented a Cessna 172 Skyhawk. Uh, we have 
So we're going to go to St. Louis. So this is how we have to get it started from here on out. Um, turn off shadow play or put it down. Let's see here. It looks like everything's ready to go. FSX yoke. Do, 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 do. FS. There we go. So we will bring this up. One of the things that's important to note with FSX, you kind of need to start it in windowed mode, or if you do start your flight and you're in full screen, you need to hit alternate enter in order to bring it into window mode to get to the FS economy client. I found that if I didn't put it into windowed mode and tried to just alt tab, that more often than not, FSX would just reload to a black screen. I don't know if it happens to be something in my system or what, Oh, PC Pilot. Ooh. So, I'm going to select Free Fly here. We need to select our aircraft. I'm also going to connect. This is uh, WFSX WX, the weather engine. So, it will connect here. Sim Connect, FSU, IPC connection established. Great. All ready to go. Uh, we'll see here that I have a lot of aircraft to choose from to fly, a lot of it freeware, some of it payware, um, that you'll be seeing in future videos. But I'm going to go ahead and just go to Cessna, 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 uh, 172, and you can choose either any of these Cessnas, I believe, maybe not that one, that's the glass cockpit. I don't... FS Economy does not interact with the rest of the simulation the way that FS Passengers does. Uh, weather will be taken care of by the weather engine. Current time is, again, 10 o'clock in the morning. So current location, we need to go to 3LF, Litchfield, Illinois. And then under flat, uh, flight panel here, we're going to go to 3LF. And... We're going to say parking three just to put us somewhere to start. And we're going to end at KSTL. And it doesn't, again, FS Economy does not save the state of where you left that aircraft or where that aircraft is scheduled to begin. You've kind of got to uh, figure that all out for yourself. Uh, we're going to go ahead and choose a RNAV GPS. We could also do low altitude airways. Let's, let's just see. Uh, that's a BFF uh, or BFR. Um, I'm looking outside the window right now. It's kind of overcast, so we're going to go ahead and do an instrument flight rating. Uh, what's our nav log on this? Estimated time for en route, 25 minutes, 4.4 gallons. This is the lie. I know it's going to be closer to 45 minutes. But we could do a proper low altitude IFR. Uh, what's my altitude? 4,000 feet. All right. That looks good. No, don't put my aircraft there. We're going to go ahead and fly now. Unfortunately, this is on my mechanical hard drive, not my SSD. Uh, originally, it was on my SSD, and then that one decided to brick up. Um, I think I need to install Well, my system would no longer see it. It's a crucial MX100 after a power failure, and this is not an uncommon problem. And I bought an adapter for USB, and it actually does read it and see it, and everything was there. So I think I just need to install the uh, latest firmware on it and put it back in, and should then work. Uh, but that being said, then I'm going to have to go and transfer a bunch of stuff. So in the meantime, I bought another 240 gig hard drive or SSD that I'm using for Star Citizen and Elite Dangerous here. Um, need to put on my parking brake. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the engine. I thought we were going to start at parking three, but maybe that was parking three. Uh, this is not a very big air airport. So be it. I'm going to go up here to FS. I think it's pause the simulation. I'm going to go up to FS Economy Client, say start flight. 
Please add 14 kilograms. I'm going to go ahead and ignore loading. It doesn't seem to affect anything one way or the other. So that's all set up. Now I'm going to go ahead and go to full screen. And give me a second here as I pull up my chair and I will get ready to get this air, prep this aircraft. We're going to uh, go ahead and set our altitude here to 4,000. Vertical climb rate to 800. Cessna should be able to take care of that. Okay, that's not. Oh. It was paused. So we're going to set our trim to take off. Flaps to take off. Uh, let's see here. Light switches. those on. This is just the default uh, 172 that comes with FSX Steam Edition and please hold on for one second here. Now, as we're going to see, there's no boarding or or need to spend five minutes simulating boarding, although you do have the option of skipping that in uh, FS Passengers. But more, at, there's not the interactivity during the flight that you'll see in FS Passengers. For an example, FS Passengers, you have the sound of the crew boarding, of the passengers boarding, the you probably hear the my my chair squeak. Uh, you hear. Uh, let's see here. What's our fuel mixture like? In throttle up just slightly. Oh, that's a throttle. Is that a mixture? Or, uh, I guess you don't feather the prop or not looking at it. At any rate. Cockpit. Or you can just hit Control E. G B A F M. That's a German designation, isn't it? So, before I forget, let me get A T C. St. Louis approach. Cessna Golf Bravo Alpha Fox Hot Mike. I have parted to St. Louis. Ready to copy. Cessna Golf Bravo Alpha Fox Hot Mike. Is cleared at St. Louis Airport and filed. Climb and maintain 4000. Departure frequency is 124.2 plus clock 1533. Clearance void 30 minutes from now. Cessna Golf Bravo Alpha Fox Hot Mike. Cleared at St. Louis Airport as filed. Climb and maintain 4000. Departure is 124.2 plus clock 1533. Clearance void 30 minutes from now. Cessna Alpha Fox Hot Mike. Correct. See here, what direction are we facing? We are facing three six, so four.
little bit late there with the V rotate. Now here's one of the big advantages over FS passengers is that you can use time acceleration. Now they do have a 30 per 48 rule which means you can only log up to 30 hours of flight time in game even using time acceleration every 48 real hours it's a rolling clock and that's to prevent people who have 8 to 10 hours or 15 hours a day to fly Microsoft Flight Sim due to their lifestyle from making a whole lot of money over the persons who can only fly an hour. And they didn't want to disallow time acceleration. And in FS passengers, if you use time acceleration, you get dinged pretty good for, uh, I think you lose between 10 and 30% of your points for using time acceleration. Uh, here you can use up to 16x time acceleration with no penalties, so you might as well. Uh, you know, this is a lot better for pilots and people who have only a limited amount of time per day that they can actually spend flying and playing in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So we're in Illinois, it looks like right now, kind of flying into clouds. That's why I selected an IFR flight. Unfortunately here, Shadowplay decides to screw up when I take the game out of uh, basically time acceleration mode and back into normal time and I have a little bit of trouble. Uh, Basically, at this point, I should have known to already have switched back down to either 2x or normal time. We're if currently going at 8x acceleration because things go by fast in IFR flight and you're hitting buttons. And apparently, I hit some button that turned off shadow play. And as a result, well, the recording of this actually got cut short before we did the landing. But did a safe, fine landing, exited out, and made $1,100 on this flight. Uh, again, exited out, recorded the flight. So again, you don't get the flight in-flight experience that you do with FS passengers. ILS FS passengers 12. is more about managing the flight, especially once you get into larger airliners, you know, regional aircraft like, uh, well, the Embraer 120 or the Dash 8 series or the CRJ, ERJs, the regional jets uh, right, and above. So it becomes much more about managing the flight at large and uh, not just, here. you know, selecting from point A to point B. Nonetheless, if you're looking for kind of wanting to give a reason behind your flights and things like that, and maybe experience flying to airports that Ever. you otherwise wouldn't have, I probably wouldn't have flown to Litchfield uh, to St. Louis or from St. Louis to Litchfield or Pickneyville or some of the other area airports without FS economy. Uh, it is free of charge. Just takes a couple minutes to download, set everything up, and that's pretty much all for this video. Thanks very much. Be sure to like and subscribe. I will be doing some FS economy videos in the future with X-Plane. Until then, see you next time.